Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cindergrader channel, and here we are back in the workshop after the NAM show. So, uh, this is BT's QE106, and it is ready to rock. We would have taken this to NAM if BT had actually been able to attend NAM this year, but uh, he had a film score project dropped on him like a week before the show, and he had basically two weeks to get it done. It overlapped Nam, so we didn't get to see him. So that's cool, though, because he says it's, it, the project worked out great, and he will announce, I'm sure, uh, when the film is out, uh, and you'll be able to actually check out the score. So you know, be sure to go to BT's site and uh, stay tuned on all that sort of stuff. But in the meantime, here's his QE106, and it is pretty much complete. Uh, I, the only thing that it needs to really have done to it at this point is uh, I've got to put the rail back on because I took it off to do some refinishing and it needs to be calibrated uh, and as you might recall inside I put let me see if I can get some oil on the subject um, let's see ah, here we go I'll just use this hand light there we are um, I basically put let me see, I'll zoom you guys in on that zoom in on that there we go Okay, so looking inside, looking inside, we've got the Analog Renaissance latest generation filter chips installed, just the same as in Sonic Mayhem's, and we also have Analog Renaissance wave chips as well, and these are the latest wave chip generation from Analog Renaissance. They're white, they're not uh, black and gold like the other ones, but um, I'm told that the very next generation will be black and gold as well uh, to match. But right now, these are the latest wave chips and the latest, so they're all in there. Now, they need to be calibrated. Now, you all remember from some of the other videos uh, on calibration, that usually involves having a t uh, oscilloscope probes or test probes and, and jumping them between these various different pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then six, five, four, three, two, one, depending on whether you're doing test program three or test program four. Uh, I always found that to be kind of problematic. I also didn't like the fact that I had to use, um, in addition to my oscilloscope, I had to use a frequency counter to be absolutely sure uh, of the filter frequencies. And that's when I'm tuning filter frequencies, I have a new algorithm, that's a fancy word for technique or recipe. Uh, I have a new way of tuning the filters that gives you 12 tone calibration across the board. I'm going to show you guys how to do that when I call my super 12 tone calibration expialidocious technique. So I'm going to, I'm, going to, I'm not going to speak in a Cockney accent and I'm not going to go clean a chimney. Um, so all right, so, so anyway, uh, yeah, if you didn't get that joke, that's okay. You didn't miss anything. So, at any rate, uh, how do I, you know, normally that's what I do. Uh, normally I patch those guys in and I go to a lot of trouble and so on and so forth. But I'm going to show you something that I have designed uh, to solve this entire problem. Uh, this is what I call the disintegrator calibrator. And it is a s small uh, project box uh, with a rotary switch inside and some circuitry to do the line padding and whatnot. And what it basically allows me to do is I can just tap right in to the, um, yeah, let's see, do this without the, the flashlight. Maybe not without the flashlight. Is that a little bit better? Remember, guys, no production values on this channel, only synthesizers. Let's see here. There we go. Ah, there's our product. Okay, so uh, these guys here tap straight in to the test points, and then this goes to the analog ground. And they come like this all the way up, and then here is the, the disintegrator calibrator box. And what it basically allows me to do is select whether I'm dealing with voice number one, voice number two, voice number three. I don't have to move any pins or anything like that. Four, five, six, and that's on test program three. And then uh, test program four, so six, five, four, three, two, one, which is of course the other bundle next to it. So these Frankenstein clips here on the end, what they are is what you actually hook your scope probe to. So your scope probe will be giving you things like your amplitudes and your duty cycles, and uh, and also it will be if you've got a scope that does it frequency counting as well. Um, but 
you may be just using uh, a simple basic uh, program on iOS and that's one of the reasons why I in this video I'm going to be showing you we're going to I actually got a bunch of iOS guitar tuners and uh, spectrum um, spectral analyzer apps invested a few bucks on that not not a lot maybe under under 20 uh, just to get a few competing things to try out and uh, this is actually a um, tip ring ring sleeve plug that goes into the microphone jack the headphone microphone jack on your iOS device or your Android device and then you can run a tuning app in order to find out what the frequencies are so for tuning the filters in my super 12 tone calibration routine that's uh, what this is for so inside the box uh, besides the switch itself is the circuitry required to take what's essentially plus or minus all the way up to six volts or more peak to peak and take them down to a level that's not going to overload your microphone input and at the same time uh, there's some other stuff that has to go in there a capacitor basically because there's some voltage on the output of the microphone uh, all part of how it senses uh, commands and stuff uh, when you have like a mute button on your on your mic headphone and whatnot so there's a cap in there I can give you the, the schematics uh, as needed later on uh, but right now that's all in here and that works the net result though is that if you're using a scope uh, connected to the iOS thing you do, really don't know uh, what the peak to peaks are unless you actually have a reference uh, value to go off of um, so uh, again I'm going to have to do some math and work out a conversion. Um, then I can basically figure out what exactly the ratio is between what's going to be demonstrated on the scope uh, connected to the direct leads and what's going to be demonstrated on an iOS application scope uh, in terms of amplitudes. Now that's only for measuring amplitudes. For frequencies and everything else it's totally fine. So uh, just thought I'd get that clear. So we're going to give this guy a test run and we're going to calibrate BT's Mad magnificent synth all in one so let's get on it shall we all right so we always start with the power supply and the power supply is straightforward enough uh, this is the ground lead here and uh, this is test point one over here um, so basically I'll show you them on the diagram but okay and I am reading a voltage of minus 14.95 so just gonna adjust this VR1 here so I get minus 15 be very careful okay minus 15 Okay, all right. So next is VR2. We stay on this ground point, VR2. Uh, okay. There we are. So the yellow resistor, uh, variable resistor was number one right up there. And the black one is VR2. And test point two is just down here underneath. See what I'm touching? So I'm going to have to, this is a little bit of a drag because I can't actually clip to anything. It's 4.99. It's really, really close. In most circumstances, I just leave it at that. Um, because that's within tolerance. But because I really am a bit of a nut who likes high precision, I'm just going to try turning it a little bit and see what happens. And I turn it the wrong way. It's now 4.89. So I'm going to turn it counterclockwise, just a little bit, and then check again, 5.12, yeah, it was really close and I destabilized it, okay, just a tiny little bit, it's always nice when you can 5.05, okay, back just a little bit Five point 
six. Okay, clockwise. Just a little bit. Five point oh four. Okay, I'm getting there. Should have left well enough alone, eh? That's the story of my life. If it ain't broke, I still try and fix it. 4.91, yeah, way off the mark. If I could just track along what I'm doing as I'm doing it, I would greatly speed things up. It's 4.99 again. I'm leaving it. Okay, 4.99 is fine. Uh, now, now we're going to test test point number three which is over here, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. wow. so over here it has to be 15 volts with intolerances, that's 14.89 and this one here is 4.90, however I don't think we have much by way of trimmers elsewhere. Minus 15, 4.99, is there another trimmer? Those are the only two trimmers, you basically just work from there. So one more time, 4.90. Huh. Well, it is what it is. That's how this guy rolls. Uh, it's all within tolerance, uh, anyway, and it's calibrated. All right, next up is the DCO control voltage offset. So I've got uh, this guy at the ground, and then this guy over here at TP3. Uh, and uh, I'm just taking a look. If I play a note, any note you'll see that the voltage being generated, the control voltage, uh, shows up on the scope. And right now it says minus 3.81 because I pressed the lowest note on the keyboard and the key bed, and that says minus 5.25 at the highest note on the key bed. So you get the idea. What I'm going to do at this point is uh, I am lo lo loading test program, and again on the Kiwi you get into the test program by powering it up while pressing uh, oh, it's off the side uh, there we go you get into the test mode by, by powering it up with the um, arpeggiator on off button held uh, which is I believe on the stock Juno front panel is the save button, is that right? yeah, it's the save button on the stock Juno 106 front panel so if you don't have the overlay that's what you press down the save button and you power it up and it'll go up into this test mode here which is the same kind of program as what's on the Roland only in the Roland you have to I believe power it up with key transpose held down but that's different when you've got QB 106 it's the save button or if you've got the overlay in place it's the arpeggio on off button you hold that down while powering it up so here it is and I've got program one loaded and uh, you see these uh, guys over here I'm just going to press the MIDI button, the page MIDI button, and watch what happens. And you see how it went to zero and now it says OF? That's because it turned off the control voltage uh, to its nominal value. And this is good. It should be zero. So there it is. Zero, 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 zero. So that is fine. It doesn't need calibration. If it did need calibration, it would be VR33, but we're not going to calibrate that. So moving right along. All right, next up we're doing VCA bias, which is test point seven. And test point seven, uh, when the other guys connect it to ground, of course, the uh, ground, uh, right now it's coming up to point two five three, uh, and that has got to be two five three when that off indicator is blinking. And right now it's still blinking, so control voltage is off, and we're getting to point two five three. Uh, VR34 is the one next to TP7, so that's the one I'm going to adjust. I want this to be two five, not two five three, so. No, in the wrong direction. Two five zero. There we go. Two five zero. Just like that. Um, right on. 
And now we move right along.